I was fighting Matt Damon. He kicked me low. He kicked me in the uh, in the balls. And I thought he was about to say, "Oh, sorry, mate. I've I've kicked you in the balls." I sort of opened my eyes to say, "It's okay." And all I saw was the face of Jason Bourne peering down at me, and he was frisking me. When I saw that, I was like, "Oh." And I felt stupid, like I was messing the film up. Hey GQ, this is Scott Adkins, actor and martial artist, and this is The Breakdown. First up, Ip Man. Why you do go? He's well up for it, isn't he? He wants to fight 10 people. Not one, not two, not three, but 10 people. And you know he will, and he'll kick out of all of them. I mean, look at that. The guy runs in with a jumping back kick or flying kick, takes him down to the floor and straight away just stamps on his head and it looks pretty real. It's a Hong Kong movie, so probably he actually stamped on his head. And as he says, he rolls over, his arm cracks and breaks. Sickening noise. Brutal, just snaps his leg back like that. He's not messing about. See, that was the kick right there. Quick hook kick. I mean, it man's not gonna be doing that. He's a Wing Chun guy, but I just, you know, it's Donnie Yen, so you gotta get a few in. Not that I've snapped anyone's leg recently, but I don't believe that it would work that way, especially not at the hip. Maybe if it snaps at the knee, it would have been a bit more believable. I enjoyed it more because it was a fake leg and it looked a little bit fake. It Man is mostly about straight strikes, the Wing Chun. It's based on uh, the guy that taught Bruce Lee Wing Chun. It's considered to be a softer style and it's very simplistic in its, uh, in its attack. Yeah, they don't do uh, circular punches. It's, it's all straight down the line like this. So it's like the intercepting fist, blocking and hitting at the same time. just smashes him into the ground. How brilliant is that? I tell you what, I love it when they actually get hit hard. Now, it's tough being a stunt guy, especially in Hong Kong, because you are expected just to get slammed. But it looks so damn good. It really does look great. He's punching him in the face for real, right? He's just smashing him in the face. Now, I don't know about this film, but I worked with Donnie. There's a scene in another movie called Flashpoint where he actually punches someone in the face. That was crazy, he just punched the guy in the face. And it told me that it turned out that they had a rubber fist. They would hold the, the rubber fist, it would be on a stick, and they'd put the sleeve up a bit, and he would just punch him with the rubber fist. So maybe they've done that here. I was in It Man 4, I played the bad guy. I had to take a few full-on fists to the face for the art of filmmaking as well. I got kicked in the face, I got punched in the face. Now, there's that line where you're not gonna go all out and try and put me in the hospital. I mean, I believe Donnie Yen wanted me to be an it man because he knew that I was gonna help him do what we needed to do less painfully and quicker. Because if you have to do 10, 20 takes, because the other guy you're doing it with can't get it right. That, that's miserable. It's not easy. It seemed like a good idea when I was 12. Turns out it's difficult. And also look how hard he elbows this guy. It's one of those things in martial arts movies, especially when you're gonna fight 10 people, that as a stunt performer, you've gotta be one of those guys in the background and you have to fill space and try and look busy but obviously you're just waiting for your time to run in and get your face punched. It's very difficult to choreograph anything with more than one person. It's hard enough when it's one on one, but you know, how do you keep these people from all just storming him at once? I mean, in reality, that's what's gonna happen. One martial art that I had a little bit of experience with was Krav Maga, so we would, talk, we would always talk about taking on multiple opponents because that was a martial art that was all about you know, realistic scenarios and, and how you could deal with them. If you're dealing with a lot of opponents, what you need to try and do is get them all in front of you somehow. That's when you're gonna be in real trouble if anyone gets behind you. You don't want five people coming at you at once, you wanna get into a position where only one or maybe two can come at you at once, not three, four, five. You can't plan what you're gonna do. I mean, that's the thing, you used to get these martial arts books where you would say, oh, if somebody tries to punch you with a straight right, you need to do this and hit him there and then take him down. You don't know what's gonna happen. So you just have to have enough experience and a cool enough head to be able to react.
No, there's no special effects or stuntmen for Donny. Anyone that knows anything about Donnie Yen knows that he's up there with the likes of Jet Li, Jackie Chan. I mean, he is the best. He's an incredible martial arts performer. Not only that, he's an action director and director in his own right. And I certainly learned, learned a lot from him. Next up, the Bourne Supremacy. You have a car out front? The keys are in my coat pocket, but we should... What? Go out the back, I have another car. <laughs> Look back at the phone. How could Jason Bourne make that mistake? Bloody hell. The Bourne films are great, and I'm, I'm a huge fan of them, and a big fan of Greengrass. But I've always been disappointed with the fights in, in the Bourne franchise because they're so chaotic. It's very tense watching these fights. You know, you feel the stress of it, and maybe that's what he's going for. But I always thought it was a missed opportunity to not actually show what's going on because you miss so much of the techniques because it's all this shaky cam stuff. But I would say that the martial art is, it's close quarter fighting, Jeet Kune Do, Eskrima, Filipino martial art, that sort of thing. Like that kick there, he throws the kick from the one side of the camera and then they jump the line to the other side. So now you see the kick coming from where the other guy was stood and that's what confuses the audience. You don't know who threw the kick, they're both wearing black. I've got no idea what's going on. The fight scene that I did in the Bourne Ultimatum, Matt Damon did every single bit of it himself. He didn't have a stunt double. And he's really good and he remembers the choreography perfectly. And he was a really great screen fighter. That's where the Bourne films are great, is that they'll use uh, different elements that are around them, like the magazine and, you know, he's got this telephone wire now and he's using it to wrap the cord around his neck and he's using his shin bone against uh, his throat. That's a legit jiu-jitsu hold. Well, I'll tell you a funny story. On the Bourne Ultimatum, I was fighting Matt Damon. He kicked me low, he kicked me in the, uh, in the balls. I went down. And it was okay, it didn't hurt too much, but it definitely uh, stung a bit. But no one said cut. And then I could feel Matt Damon touching me like this. And I thought he was about to say, oh, sorry, mate, I've, I've kicked you in the balls. I sort of opened my eyes to say, it's okay. And all I saw was the face of Jason Bourne peering down at me and he was frisking me. When I saw that, I was like, oh. And I felt stupid, like I was messing the film up because he was doing his Jason Bourne thing and I was going, oh no, don't worry about it, oh. But yeah, Matt Damon is a great guy. One of the nicest actors I've worked with. Next up, The Karate Kid. It's a great film, it really is. I'd say it's one of the best martial arts films ever made, honestly. And people laugh at me when I say that. It shows martial arts off and karate in such a, an amazing way. It shows everything that is great about martial arts. But the fights are a little bit dated, so let's take a look. If you're doing the whole fight from beginning to end, you can't go full out 100% intensity for, for the whole fight because number one, you're gonna be worried that you're gonna forget the choreography, you're gonna make a mistake, you're gonna hit the guy, he's gonna throw a punch, you're, gonna, you're not gonna duck. But if you just choose a section of the fight and you rehearse it and you know what you're going to do then you can go full out 100% intensity but I can tell that that's not the way they did it here. I mean that close-up shot there you can see that he's throwing some techniques but you can't actually see the techniques yeah it's kind of a wasted shot Let, let's see what the choreography is let's see the technique. The guy did a lot of uh, taekwondo tournaments back in the day and you'd be paired up with different fighters throughout the day. And if you won your fight, you'd go through to the next round and through to the next round. So in the arena, there would be all these fights taking place. So by the time you get to the semi-final, everyone's watching. And then of course the final, there everything stops. Everyone's watching that mat to see who's gonna win the final of that weight category or that belt, whatever. Uh, so th that is what it, what, it's, uh, what it was like and what it probably still is like. You shouldn't be allowed to actually punch him in the face. You know, normally the rules are you can kick to the body, you can punch to the body, but you can't punch to the head. Like in Kyokushin Karate, you, you, you spar without pads. You can kick to the head because it's harder to land a kick on the head, but you can't punch to the head. 
because you know people are going to be covered in blood you're not wearing any protection just to keep it a little bit safe actually the ref here is a guy called pat johnson legendary fight coordinator type guy he's not allowed to do that because he's trying to break his knee that's definitely a bad move no i don't think that happens it'd be more like finish him finish him wouldn't want anyone to hear them because that's not the done thing in martial arts. He knows he's in trouble. He knows he's losing the fight. There's a lot riding on this. He's got a girl that he wants to keep. He's gonna lose the fight, so what does he do? He thinks, okay, I'm gonna do the crane kick. I'm gonna bring one knee up and get these arms up like that. He's never gonna see this coming. Let's see what happens. He didn't see that coming. How did he not see that coming? Let's take another look at that. He must have just been confused, like, what is he doing? He's standing there, he's trying to look like some sort of stork. What is he, is he a bat? Is he a bird? What's going on? He makes a move, bang. That's just one of those techniques, I guess. You just wouldn't see it coming. I mean, once he strikes that pose, it's obvious he's up to something. So what I would do is I would just back off and let him get it out of his system. And then when he goes back to normal fighting, we could continue. 34 years of martial arts training, I have never come across the crane kick in reality. I only know it from the Karate Kid movie. <laughs> yeah, it's not gonna work in real life. Back in the mid eighties, we were lapping it up. It was great. But he had a bad knee, didn't he? So he had no choice. I've got to do the crane kick now because I've only got one leg. That kick has been used. I mean, I remember Lyoto Machida doing that kick against, I think, Randy Couture, and he knocked him out cold and he knocked his tooth out. And I've worked with Randy and he didn't see it coming. <laughs> but because he wasn't in the stalk position, he did it from a normal fighting stance. So you bring the one knee up, they think you're gonna kick with that leg and, and it's the other leg. I think a lot of the time people think they're gonna take the front kick to the body and they brace for impact and they're not expecting to get kicked in the head. Back in those days in the UFC, to get a front kick to the face was quite unusual, but then Anderson Silva did it, Lyoto Machida did it, and then you know people were on notice then, they knew to look out for the front kick to the face. I can certainly tell that um, Ralph Macchio uh, didn't know what he was doing with the martial arts, but it's okay because his character is learning karate and you know, he's not meant to be an expert at this point. But the other guy, he seems to know a bit. He's, I would be surprised to learn that he hadn't done something before that movie. Obviously they went through some training, but he, he's the better mover. The whole thing was, was Danny's fault. He stole the guy's girl and uh, then beat him up for it. Not a nice guy really, that karate kid. Next up, the protector. And I'm a big fan of Tony Jaa. This is a one take fight. Legitimate one take fight, no cuts. I know I spoke to Tony about this fight and he told me that he thinks they did it 10 times and he believes that it was number seven that they used. So they obviously weren't happy with the seventh take and thought they, they could get it better. I guess they never did get it better. So they settled for take number seven. You can just see how fit this guy is to be able to do this whole thing in, in one take. It's quite incredible. I would never have been able to have done this. I wouldn't have had the fitness, I don't think. So you can see that the take starts now and that they've put a different lens on the camera. It's got kind of a fisheye, very wide angle lens because they want to be able to not miss any of the action. And this guy, out of every guy working in the martial arts film business, this is the guy that hits people hard. And because he's doing this as a one take, you know for sure that he's just hitting people because you don't want to risk making a mistake and having to do the whole thing again. So if the guy's there in front of you, just, just hit him and move on to the next guy. And also this shows you the importance of having a dedicated stunt team. You know, he's got at least 10, 15, 20 stunt guys that are all there to support Tony. It cannot be underestimated the importance of stunts. So that's a lovely Arabian no-handed cartwheel off the desk there. You know, he's just so agile, so fit. He's putting that in at the beginning of this because he knows he's gonna be shattered by the end of it. He wouldn't be able to do something like that. So let's do it at the beginning. But he learned to do these moves and jump so high 
not realizing that in the Hong Kong movies they were using wires. He thought that you should be able to jump that high and it just shows you what's possible. If you have no limits in your, in your mind, you can accomplish amazing things like, like this guy. I mean, that's just a guy who's padded up and he's smashing through the, the, the banister and landing flat on the floor. It's probably a padded floor. The other thing that people don't really think about with stuff like this is how fit is the camera guy? These cameras, it's a steady cam. It weighs quite a bit and he's got to get all the way up these stairs. And also it's very important to have a, a camera guy that understands fighting as well. He needs to think like a stunt guy. See what I mean? He's just leathered that guy, smashed him through the door. Muay Thai is, it's the art of eight limbs is what it is. You're using your fists, your feet, your knees, and your elbows. A lot of it comes from knife fighting and that translated into fighting like this. But it is a very effective form of fighting. You see it in the UFC all the time. They can break bones with their shins. They can kick through baseball bats. It's deadly, it's deadly martial art. There's a lot of breakaways. Um, set design and all that is coming into play, very important. I mean, they had to set that up for 10 different takes, clean it up and set, reset it and everything. You want the breakaways to look real and not fake, but you don't want them to actually be so tough that they're gonna hurt you either. Legitimate Aikido technique there. You can see he's starting to get tired now. He's losing that explosiveness and who can blame him? So that guy that just went off the top there, they didn't pan down. Why didn't they pan down? Is it because we didn't want to see him die? Or was it because they've put down crash mats? Probably they've put down some crash mats, even though they weren't there in the beginning. They had people building these boxes while he was doing the rest of the take, ready for that guy to jump into the boxes and keep him safe. I mean, they're breakaways, but they can still cut you and bruise you. I had a plate smashed in my face in one film and I felt like I'd just been punched in the face. Almost knocked me unconscious. I think it's because he followed through with his fist. Look at him, you can see he's tired now. And uh, this guy getting the, the, the knee and he smashes into the glass there. Good job. You'll notice that some of the stunt guys that get hit in the head, like him smashing his head back, they've got bandanas on probably because they've got some padding underneath the bandana just to keep them safe a little bit. Because the guy kicks hard, you can't blame them, right? You can see now though, in this bit, this technique here where he, he goes around and he's gonna, I think what he wanted to do was throw the guy over his back, but I think maybe it didn't work as well because he's so tired. And maybe that's one of the reasons why they wanted to do another take. It still works because it looks like he breaks his arm anyway. This is one of the most amazing oneers I've ever seen. Um, I don't think there is a legitimate one with no hidden cuts that equals this. Next up, Charlie's Angels. Wire work. This was probably early 2000s, right? The Matrix had just happened. And the wire work in the Matrix, it kind of works because you're in the Matrix, right? But it was all the rage back then. You're getting Drew Barrymore doing some stuff that would be impossible to do without wires. So that does not happen in real life where you run up someone and do a flash kick and somersault off them. I've done that quite a few times in quite a few of my movies, but I wouldn't fancy trying it on a Saturday night outside the pub. It's not gonna go my way, I don't think. Especially with tight jeans on. King Kong Palm. She's using some sort of Kung Fu style. It was all the rage at this point because The Matrix was such a big hit. Kung Fu is great for a woman to do as well. It suits, it's very graceful. Um, you know, it looks, looks brilliant being performed by a, a lady. She's doing a lot of this stuff by herself. I mean, she seems to be doing all the wire work. You can actually jump up and do the splits over someone. And then I have seen someone kick off somebody and flip over and kick someone behind them. That's a very difficult move to do, even for an experienced stuntman. It is possible. And even to do it on the wire is, is a good achievement. Did a pretty good job there. She back kicked that guy. When you do the back kick, you really want to have your back facing as you kick her hip came out too much. But the follow-up kick after the back kick, it's a nice inside crescent kick, good low angle as well. That has got to be the old 
put the shoe on the hand technique and smack him in the face with it. That's an old, old favorite, that one. And that's kicking your ass. When an actor gets involved and does as much as they can themselves, whether you're on a wire or not, I always respect that. She could have probably said, I'll just have the stunt double do all of it. But she did quite a bit of this on her own. In fact, most of it, it's still not easy. I hate being on a wire, that stuff hurts. She made a good account of herself. She did well. Next up, Undisputed 2, Last Man Standing. When I got the role for this film, originally they were thinking of someone like Dolph Lundgren, you know, the big Russian, but the director wanted me to play the part, so I put on a lot of muscle. I knew that Michael Jai White was gonna be the hero and I'm supposed to be the bad guy. And how the hell am I gonna be able to intimidate this guy looking like I do now? So a lot of training went into this to become Boyka. But the extra weight, the extra muscle, it made it more difficult to do all the, the, the fancy kicks and everything. <laughs> It's funny because what you end up doing is, I know I've got the blood in my mouth and I've got to take the first hit and the second hit, but I don't want to let the blood out of my mouth until the third. So you have to hold it for the correct moment and then let the blood fly. In between the next five punches or whatever it is, I'm trying to get the gum shield to come out of my mouth. I'm trying to loosen it with my tongue so that when he hits me with the last punch, I can spit the gum shield up in the air. See, Boyk is an MMA guy, and this was one of the first MMA films to come out. MMA is mixed martial arts, and it's basically using whatever style works, you know? So when it first uh, started, you had Hoist Gracie, who was a jiu-jitsu guy, and he tore through the division. He took everyone out with jiu-jitsu, and everyone was like, okay, jiu-jitsu is the most dominant and best martial art. And for a long time, the UFC was all grappling at that point. Wrestlers came in, and still to this day, it's thought if you can control where the fight takes place, whether it takes place on the feet or whether it takes place on the ground, if I can control that, I'm gonna win the fight. So the main disciplines of MMA would be boxing, Thai boxing, because we're using the elbows and knees as well, Jiu-Jitsu, once it goes to the ground. But a Jiu-Jitsu guy, they need to get it to the ground first. So if you're a Jiu-Jitsu guy that doesn't know wrestling, you're gonna find it hard against these wrestlers to get them to the ground. I remember that Mike, and he's a tough guy and he's a legitimate martial artist, that back kick, <laughs> that back kick caught him flush. I had to apologize after that. He was not happy. So this is a kick that I'm most known for. A lot of people call it the Boyka kick, but actually it's called the Giver kick. The reason it's called the Giver kick is it was first performed by a guy called Akira Noguchi, who was a stuntman for, uh, in the Giver suits for a movie called Giver, The Dark Hero. And he did this kick and he actually gave it to me on a, one of the movies we did before this, Special Forces, he was the fight coordinator. So I feel I have legitimate ownership of the move because he gave it to me. I'm gonna watch that again one more time just for my benefit, forget about you lot. That is a good looking kick. That's one of the kicks that you would group under the label of a suicide kick. For anyone that wants to do that kick, you've got to accept that you're gonna land on your back. You know, it's another kick that would never work in a real situation. There's zero power in the bit that hits it because your whole body weight's moving this way and you just flick that bit out. It's, it's just a touch. But that's what's good about performing this kick for the movies, is I can actually try and hit the guy's face. Probably I won't, but even if I do, it's, it's gonna be very, very slight. So you've got to jump up, lean back. I'm gonna go high with the first leg. And then as he comes back up, it's actually tougher for the other guy. The other guy's gonna sell this kick because he has to duck under and come up and find the second part of the kick react to it. You're working as a partnership, the two of you together, it's more like dancing than real fighting. That's one of those times when you get one of the stuntmen just to run in to break the fall of the actors. We didn't want to land on the hard wooden floor. We prefer to land on the Bulgarian stunt guy. This movement here, where I duck under his punch and I hit him in the stomach, I'm aware that the camera is behind me and that if I don't show the technique by covering the camera with my back, 
that's going to be the wrong thing to do. So you notice that I, I, I'm under, but I'm, I'm showing the technique. The last kick that I do on him there is the 540, they call it. So I'm actually landing on the foot that I'm kicking him with. What we should have done was just finish the film there and Boyka was the best. And he didn't have to fight Chambers again and get beaten. She just left it at that. No, it's not a true depiction of, a, of an MMA fight, a true MMA fight, as is a, it's very much a stylized martial arts version of what an MMA fight would be. That kick, the Giver kick, would not work in, in the cage for real, but it looked great and, you know, it's a bit of fun. Next up is Rush Hour. He meant cut me loose, let me go. No, no! I will be there. Now, Jackie Chan is the master of using um, furniture and whatever elements are around him in the scene. He will absolutely go to the set and he'll figure out uh, exactly how he's going to use the surroundings uh, in the fight. And he's brilliant at that. He's going to use as many things inventively uh, as he can. He directs, does his own fights, does his own stunts. He writes, the guy does everything. He's a legend, a living legend. Going over on the chair like that, quintessential Jackie Chan stuff, and then fighting over this gun. And he has his whole team around him. The guys that he's fighting are members of the Jackie Chan stunt team. It's like a dance, but it perfectly fits Jackie Chan's style, which is always a comedic uh, way of doing things. First time I ever saw Jackie Chan was in a film called The Protector, and it was an American movie. And for whatever reason, they decided that they wanted him to be like Clint Eastwood. They didn't want Jackie Chan to be Jackie Chan. I mean, he was famous for a reason. He was famous for the comedy slapstick stuff and the fights that he was doing. And they tried to completely change him because they didn't think that that would work for an American audience. And I was unimpressed when I saw it. I thought, who's this guy trying to be Bruce Lee? And the best thing that Brett Ratner did when he brought Jackie Chan over to do the Rush Hour movies was just say to Jackie, you take care of your fights. You do that thing. You're amazing at it. Just do what you do. And of course, the rest is history because America completely fell in love with Jackie Chan. And that's Ken Lo, one of the Jackie Chan stunt team, amazing kicker. You know, someone who knows what they're doing, if they've got a gun, they're not gonna have that gun close enough for you to grab it. You need to just do whatever they say and hope that they don't shoot you. But if he's stupid enough to come close enough with that weapon, then there's a lot of things you could do to, di to disarm the gun. I guess it's kind of like what Al Pacino said in The Irishman, right? You charge the gun, you run from the knife. Yeah, if you're Jackie Chan, you'll be break dancing around the gun. Chris Tucker getting in on the action. Good job, Chris. He did the crane kick a little bit, didn't he? I don't know how many takes they've done, but I'm willing to bet that they've probably done a few takes because the stuntman that's about to get kicked by Chris Tucker, you can see that he puts his arm across his chest because he's thinking, oh, I don't want to take, I don't want to take another one of these. These really hurt because he's not holding back Chris Tucker. And look at him, how much he leathers him. Sometimes actors, they have no respect for stuntmen and they just really enjoy <laughs> kicking them hard. Classically, the way it works in Hong Kong is they'll make everything up on the day and he'll look around and he'll think, okay, uh, I can use this maybe and maybe we can use that. But he's got the luxury of having his whole stunt team around him, like 10 or 20 people. And he and they are very good themselves. I mean, and they've become action directors in their own right. He will say to them, come up with some ideas. I'm gonna go, we're gonna go for lunch. When I come back, I want everyone to give me an idea. But yeah, it cannot be underestimated. I mean, the Jackie Chan stunt team, they are the best. <laughs> I got invited to Shanghai to the Jackie Chan Action Awards and my film Undisputed 4 was in competition and I ended up winning best uh, fight sequence and best actor um, and Chris Tucker was there to give me the award. That was one of the greatest days of my life to get that award from Jackie Chan. If you're going to get an award for fighting from anyone, you want to get it from Jackie Chan and Chris Tucker. Next up, Debt Collectors. We had half a day to film this fight, not enough time. I'm an Englishman in this one, and I'm fighting these Americans who are taking the piss out of me. So I'm, I'm not too happy. I'm gonna give these Americans a good kick in. It's like good old King George always used to say, shut the f 
You get it! Again, this is fighting more than one person. It's always hard to choreograph. So that's one of those shots where it's nice and, and it holds. It starts off on one angle and then the camera spins to the left to reveal the other guy. And you can see his name's Dennis and he's having to wait, but look like he's kind of dealing with the last punch he got. But he's having to wait for the right time in order to come in and be in the correct position to make the spin kick work. But if he was a little bit more to the right, he would have blocked me and he wouldn't see the kick. But also he's not too far left because the kick will look like a miss and then we'll have to do another take. Yeah, you wouldn't want to improv in the moment and uh, be like, well, I just decided to throw a hook when I was gonna throw a straight, you know, someone's gonna get hit. It has to be precise. If you're gonna adjust something and change the choreography for the camera, you need to forget what you previously knew and now we're gonna do the new version. And some people find it hard to forget what they've been practicing for however many days, if they were lucky enough to have rehearsal. So yeah, you need to be able to, to change it, but don't change it without the other guy knowing, because then somebody's gonna get hurt. These are veteran stunt guys. Some of them, you know, they were getting on a bit, but that was part of the, the fun of the scene. They're older guys, but they've still got to do the fighting. It's not easy. Yeah, so that's Anthony DeLongis. He was in the original Roadhouse and he's 70. I've got to sidekick him and I don't want to, you know, hurt him because we're all there, we're all trying to do a job. I, I need to find that sweet spot of kicking him hard enough so that it looks like I'm actually trying to hurt him, but don't kick him too hard. Luckily, we only did one take and it was fine. <laughs> That was cool because not that I've bottled anyone for real, I don't know, but I would imagine that sometimes the bottle won't break. So it's cool that it doesn't break on that guy and then it does break on the other guy's head. I mean, he's a mixed martial artist, this character, but the flavor of this fight scene, we wanted it to be like a barroom brawl, which it is. And we were inspired by something like Roadhouse or Westerns back in the day with big looping punches. So yeah, I'm throwing some spin kicks in there. So he's like a, he's a kickboxer with Jiu Jitsu experience, but for this particular fight, we just wanted uh, a, a nice brawl. He took one for the team there. That was a great little stunt. A nice low angle to see all the, the props and the glass come towards the camera. I always try and make it as exciting and possible. Fill the frame with beautiful movement. I don't see the location until the day of the shooting. So we'll go in a gym and we'll choreograph the fight. But then when you get to the location, you may well have to adjust things because you know the table wasn't where you thought it was gonna be. So you have to be able to rearrange things if you have to. Well, it's very collaborative. And for this particular film, I'm working with the guy, Jesse V. Johnson, that I've worked with many times before. I think this was our seventh film or something like that. And the reason is that it is a collaboration. So when it comes to the action, he absolutely trusts me. I just, I'm so experienced with fight scenes now. I've been doing it since I was 23. It's a great relationship working with Jesse because I take care of the fights and he helps me with the rest of it. Most of these clips that we have watched had stuff in that would never happen. But when we have fights in, in the films, it's good to make it more exciting. Jackie Chan does his thing. It's kind of slapsticky with the comedy. It's great for him. The Bourne stuff is actually probably the most realistic of all of it. It's just a shame we couldn't see it properly. And you know, even in my film, The Debt Collectors, it's pretty simple stuff, barroom brawl. You're probably not gonna throw a spin kick in there, but you know, we did that because we just wanna make it a little bit more entertaining for the audience. Okay, thanks for watching these clips with me. I had a great time and I'll see you again.